Northern Cyprus, officially an occupied territory since 1974 and recognized as a country only by Turkey, is a region about the size of Long Island, New York and home to about 400,000 people. From our coastal base in Girne or Kyrenia, we explored the capital city of Nicosia, the North's main water reservoir, a marine turtle conservation project, and the eastern city of Famagusta. The largest city in Cyprus, Nicosia is about half an hour by minibus from Girne. Once past the Kyrenia Mountains, northern Cyprus is fairly flat and suitable for the agriculture that is the backbone of the economy. Nicosia is a divided capital split by the UN Green Zone. The bus stop is on the edge of the old city, an 11-sided walled polygon built by the Venetians in the 16th century. Most of these walls still stand today. Nicosia, Lefkosia in Turkish, and Lefkosia in Greek, was a siren in Greek mythology whose songs lured sailors to their deaths on coastal rocks. Like Kyrenia on the coast, the city was founded by Greek settlers following the Trojan War. It has been the capital of Cyprus since the 10th century. The center of Turkish Lefkosia is Ataturk Square. The Greek column was transported by the Venetians in 1550 from ancient Salamis on the east coast. The former Venetian governor's palace now hosts the Cyprus Islamic Foundations, founded in 1571 when the Ottomans took control of the island. The northern city has some nice buildings, cafes, restaurants, and shopping. But, like Girne, many are in disrepair, especially near to the UN Green Zone. One major left Kosha landmark is the Buyuk Han, or Great Inn, a caravanserai built in 1572 where traders and travelers could rest on their journeys. This beautiful building was restored in the 1990s and is now an arts and cultural center. Another landmark near the caravanserai was the 13th century Cathedral of Holy Wisdom built during the Crusader Kingdom of Cyprus period and converted into a mosque in 1571. It was unfortunately closed for renovation. The Dervish Pasha Ethnographic Museum is located in a restored early 19th century upper-class Ottoman house. The museum is definitely worth a visit as it shows many aspects of life in different segments of Ottoman Cypriot society, with the upper floor more devoted to those who would have lived in a house like this. Old Town Lefkosia, like the rest of the city, is split by the UN buffer zone or green zone. Buildings all along the zone are all abandoned, and streets dead end in concrete walls topped with barbed wire. A straight 15-minute walk south from the bus stop, the pedestrian crossing at the Ledger Street checkpoint was surprisingly straightforward. And just like that, we were in the Republic of Cyprus and European Union. The first thing that we noticed was that everything was generally cleaner and in better repair than they were in the north. Also, everything went from feeling very Turkish being very Greek. Checking out the tourism map, the northern half of Lefkosia was essentially erased. Along the green zone, as in the north, buildings were abandoned and streets just ended. But it seemed more militarized than on the northern side. And this kebab house, right next to the green zone, chose an interesting name. While the Venetian walls in the north half were often in poor condition, one section of the southern walls was turned into a wonderful park, 
that made use of the walls to provide a wide open common space. Of course, there are many Greek Orthodox churches on the south side. The only mosque that we found, originally a 14th century church, was now only open as a museum. The Leventus Museum shows a pretty comprehensive view back in time to Cyprus's past. From the geology of how the island was formed, to prehistory, the Bronze Age, ancient Greece and Rome, through Byzantium, the Crusader Kingdom of Cyprus, the Ottoman and British periods, and into modern history. Interestingly, we could look out an upper story window, across the green zone, and back into the unacknowledged north. After eating a delicious and pretty inexpensive Greek lunch in one of Old Town's many restaurants, we crossed back over to the north, again with surprising ease. About an hour west by car from Girne, the Gechit Kui Dam and Reservoir hold the primary source of fresh water for northern Cyprus. All of Cyprus has faced a shortage of fresh water since 2008. The Southern Republic of Cyprus is leveraging desalination and tanker shipments from Greece to close the gap. Northern Cyprus has chosen a unique solution. In 2015, a 100 kilometer underwater pipeline was turned on, pumping water from Turkey into this reservoir. Like most reservoirs, this one is used for recreation. Trails surround the lake, and a sizable camping ground was across the other side. A group of locals had set up a picnic lunch at the same overlook spot. They generously shared their food and even gave us some fresh produce they had just picked. We all talked and ate and enjoyed the incredible view. Just east of Girne, the Society for the Protection of Turtles Information Center is in a small building off the main road. Their primary season is June to September, so nobody was around. Their protected beach is just a short walk away down their dirt road, but again there was nothing to see. Though it's wonderful that this organization exists. The nearby herd of sheep was much more lively, but not in a social mood. Their goat neighbors were much more accommodating, letting us get a good look at their very long ears. Just over an hour east by car from Girne, Famagusta is northern Cyprus's second largest city after Lepkosia. The history of the area goes back to the 11th century BCE and the Hellenistic city of Salamis. Like the other ancient cities on Cyprus, Salamis was founded after the Trojan War. It was a major port through Roman and early Byzantine times. And according to the biblical Acts of the Apostles, it was the first major stop after Antioch on the first missionary journey of the apostles Paul and Barnabas before they moved on to Paphos and Perge in Turkey. Many Jews had migrated to Cyprus since at least the second century BCE and Barnabas was born on Cyprus so they were the primary audience for the missionaries. In the seventh century CE Arab pirate attacks destroyed the city and the inhabitants moved south to what would become Famagusta. The oldest parts of Famagusta were originally a Greek fishing village from the 3rd century BCE, which then expanded in the 7th century CE after the destruction of Salamis. It grew rapidly in the 12th to 14th centuries under the Crusader Kingdom of Cyprus. As the Kingdom of Jerusalem and the Holy Land fell to the Mamluk Sultanate, Christian refugees swelled Famagusta's population and wealth. The Gothic Cathedral of St. Nicholas was consecrated in 1328 
and it remains the most prominent building in Old Famagusta. The Crusaders who ruled Cyprus were Roman Catholic, having conquered the Byzantine governor of the island during the Third Crusade. The Orthodox St. George of the Greeks Church is on the edge of Old Town, where the Greek inhabitants were relegated as second-class citizens. In 1489, the island was sold to the Republic of Venice, and walls of the Venetian palace are still standing today. The Venetians made massive improvements to Famagusta's walls and fortifications in anticipation of attack from the Ottoman Empire who were expanding around the Mediterranean after conquering Constantinople. In 1570, the Ottoman attacks on Cyprus commenced and Famagusta was the final Venetian stronghold left on the island. The fortress that guarded the harbor during the Turkish assault inspired the setting for most of William Shakespeare's play, Othello. The tragic story of a Moorish general of Venice tasked with defending Cyprus against the Turks. Othello takes place mostly in and around the Venetian coastal fortress on Cyprus. The castle was officially named Othello Castle during the 19th century British period. In 1573, Cyprus became an Ottoman province, and the Cathedral of St. Nicholas was converted to the Sinan Pasha Mosque. During the British colonial period, Famagusta was once again a significant port, and the number one tourist destination of the newly independent Republic of Cyprus. The beach suburb of Verosha was a top global destination, attracting the rich and famous. In 1974, following the Greek nationalist coup d'etat and Turkish occupation of the north, Verosha was locked down by the Turkish military. With a small UN peacekeeping presence, its once full beach condos abandoned, and Verosha became a ghost town. Only since late 2020 has Verocha been reopened to the public and only a very small section of the streets. Bicycles are available to rent, but buyer beware, they're not in good condition. It felt surreal touring through these streets. Buildings abandoned but left standing with well-maintained streets and bike lanes and even concession trucks at the beach. But the businesses and hotels just slowly decaying over the past 48 years. Increasingly unstable and in danger of collapse. Symbolic of the divided Cyprus, unlikely to be repaired without an enormous amount of money and effort. <laughs>